Welcome. I am Dr. Jason Schmidt from the Vance Thompson Vision location in Sioux Falls, South Dakota and Alexandria, Minnesota. And welcome to the Dry Eye Dialogue, your one-stop shop for all things dry eye related. Uh, I've got two of my esteemed colleagues here, Dr. Nick Risprud out of Fargo and Dr. Larray Zimperick out of our Sioux Falls office. So welcome, guys. And yeah. Um, you know, in the final part, I just kind of want to talk about implementing strategies into a practice. So we talked about all the diagnostic tests and ways to assess this and, and new treatment modalities, but where do you start? It seems like a lot to, a lot for people to like, I don't know if, where to start. So Nick, do you have a suggestion on how does, how do you start bringing some of this to, to reality? Mm -hmm. I think uh, first, you know, I was I wasn't always passionate about dry eye to be honest with you guys. Um, I found it frustrating to treat in school. Um, and you got out in the real world, and I you know I realized like how many patients are actually struggling with this. So I'm trying to you know because bottom line you won't be good at treating something if you don't enjoy treating it. Um, so you know committing to it, uh, committing to you know maybe acquiring another piece of technology or another diagnostic to help you. Um just creating like a, you know, a streamlined approach to customized treatments, um, for each patient. Um, unfortunately insurance, you know, comes into play sometimes of what you can, you know, bill for and what you can collect, whether insurance will cover a diagnostic test or not. Um, but I rely on a lot of diagnostics to help me make the diagnosis instead of just what my eyes see in the slow lamp. Um, you know, for us, we're usually hammering it hard before our surgeries. Um, so for me, I'm, I'd am i love for these patients to, you know, get here already treated, already on a treatment plan. Um, but if I'm going to start implementing, you know, dry into my private practice or, you know, start with the basics, I'm, you know, I don't always stain patients with sodium fluorescein. If I'm going to do more, I'd start staining everybody and just getting better at finding these things. Um, and I think, you know, uh, measuring osmolarity is really simple and fast. And then, you know, something to image the lids and help us out. Um, because those on our, aren't always, that's not always easy to catch. Um, so I'd start, you know, measuring osmolarities, um, checking for inflammation and, uh, imaging the lids can just be really helpful. Yeah, I would, um. I, I think that's great. Like the, the latter, I, I liked all of what you said. I would say if I was going to implement, um, dry eye into my practice, it's, it's, it can be very, um, like you can do it cheap, right? All you really need is sodium fluorescein and your fingers, because you can put sodium fluorescein in the eye and you you can tell if there's any inflammation, any SPK, you can test tear breakup time, and you can also pull the lid down and express the glands. And between those three things, you're almost going to be able to determine what the root cause of the dry eye is. Um, of course, all the other diagnostic tests that we have um, are able to like quantify things and, and give us certain values and, and give us, give us these values that if we do, you know, lip flow or, um, tear care, whatever we may do, if we do an in-house modality, you know, three months later, we can repeat the test and see that the quantity of that grew. And so it's nice to have those tests, but, you know, implementing dry eye into your practice doesn't have to be, um, that expensive. And, um, and one thing that I think is, is, you know, implementing this is, is to know that um, it does take some educating on your regular, well, if you're in a primary care practice, your, you know, regular patients explaining to them, hey, if you're, if your eyes are, it's, it's just a simple question um, or a speed questionnaire, um, something that we can say, hey, I, I saw you filled the sheet out and it looks like you have burning eyes, you know, three days a week. Um, then this exam could transition to um, a medical exam, right? That can transition to a medical exam, or you can finish the vision exam and say, hey, come back, and I'm going to put you through um, a dry eye eval, and um, 
you know, figure out what the cause of this is. And that can go to your medical insurance. And so um, I think it can be very easy to implement dry eye, but it also, you can get lost in the weeds on what equipment to buy, um, you know, when you're wanting to do that, but you don't necessarily need it. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think there is a study that I remember now that um, I think it was Cooper Vision did years ago that an average patient in a private optometry office generates $30,000 over a lifetime. And that's by keeping them happy and in, um, you know, seeing well and whatnot. And you don't want to lose those patients because they're struggling with not being able to see, their contact lenses aren't working, and those patients then jump and come into our office and want to have surgery. So keeping them in your office is important. So financially, that's a, a reason to try to, what can I do better to manage these patients? Second is, you know, implementing dry eye can be financially um, lucrative uh, as part of your practice. You can turn your, your uh, you know, vision insurance exam, like you said, maybe into a medical exam and then having them come back again for a repeat visit for for that. And if you're saving on remakes and contact lens uh, chair time and those kind of things, that can also help improve the bottom line in your practice. So you don't need to have all these things, but the, the AOA recommends two things, do an objective test and do a subjective test. So the objective test is the questionnaire and the subjective test is staying in your finger, push on the glands. And if you want to invest in uh, measuring osmolarity and inflammation, those tests reimburse as well. And so you can do that. Some of these bigger in-house treatments are not covered by insurance, and that's a good thing. And and we charge patients over $1,000 for some of these things. And they need it, and it works. And so those are things that you can kind of build up to if you want to, but it can really end, uh, end up helping the bottom line of your practice uh, to grow. So um you know, kind of to wrap it up, I, you know, I thank you both for joining today. There's a lot of valuable insights here. Um, you know, this was a wrap up of today's dry eye dialogue. You know, I'd like to have our listeners tune in to understanding the nuances of dry eyes uh, more by, uh, by attending some of these uh, lectures that were coming up. We've got two new lectures coming up here in the next, probably, well, one in Sioux Falls, February 24th. Uh, we're having a big symposium in Sioux Falls to learn more about all things eye, and one in Alexandria on April 18th to learn about uh, additional things uh, related to the eye. Um, and patients and do or doctors can come into our offices anytime they want and spend uh, half a day or a day with us and uh, go over like a little mini fellowship where we can learn even more about dry eye disease uh, and hands-on learning. So. Um, you know, until next time, I guess, stay curious and keep learning. Uh, the world of eye care is ever changing, and so are we. I want to thank Lorraine and Nick for engaging with us today. Um, make sure you visit our website and follow us on social media for additional resources and updates. Uh, tune in next time for an awesome discussion on the Sharp Science Sessions, all things LASIK. Well, I'm your host, Jason. Take care and good night. Thanks, Jason.